Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. No criminal more potentially dangerous than the one who commits a crime out of a desire for revenge. On the 23rd of March, a letter delivered to the home of Larry and Peggy Bolton triggered a revenge crime that was to involve Dan Matthews and the Highway Patrol in one of its most harrowing cases. Oh, what's the mail? A few ads in this letter from the mortgage company. Since when do you open my mail? It was addressed to both of us. I'll see you later. Why don't you read the letter, Larry? I'll read it later. No, it. now. It says that we're four months behind in our payments. They're going to foreclose. What? Well, they're out of their minds. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Don't you worry, Peg. I'll straighten it out on my way home tonight. You didn't make the payments each month, didn't you, Larry? Well, of course I did. This is just a bookkeeping mistake, that's all. Well, I give them a piece of my mind. Oh, could I see the receipts? Look, are you calling me a liar? I told you I was through with gambling and I meant it, so don't go calling me a liar. I just want to see the receipts. Larry, I work too to help make those payments. I think I'm entitled to it. Well, honey, they're around here somewhere. I'll find them later. Now, come on, give me a nice smile and a kiss. Just a minute. Who are you calling? Mortgage company. As long as you made those payments and they've got a record of it, and I want to get this thing straightened out right here and now. H Hello? Could I speak to your bookkeeper? Okay. So I didn't make the payments. So what? I'll get the money. Oh. Some more gambling? I warned you, Larry, what I'd do if you started this up again. Look, I told you I'd get the money. So quit harping, will you? Just quit harping. I thought you changed. Oh, what a fool I was. You're just no good. There's a last time for everything, including that. I've had it, Larry. I'm through now. Get out of here. Well, that's just fine with me. I'm fed up to here with your harping and your nagging. You went out? Swell! Nothing could make me happier. Look, send for your things. I'll have them ready for you. But don't you ever come back here again. Now get out! What's the matter here? This delivery was supposed to go out a half an hour ago. Waiting for Larry, Mr. Clay. He hasn't shown up yet. Well, get it all ready to roll, Joe. I'll see if I can find out what happened to it. Yes, sir. Hello? Hello, this is Mr. Clay. Is Larry there? He left a few minutes ago. He should be there soon. Is this the nurse? How is Mrs. Bolton feeling? This is Mrs. Bolton. I'm feeling fine. Uh, mighty glad to hear that, Mrs. Bolton. Larry said it was a pretty serious operation. Operation? I haven't had an operation. Is that what Larry told you? Oh, you said you were real sick. That's why I... Well, never mind, Mrs. Bolton. I guess I must have misunderstood what he said. A nice talking to you. Goodbye. Joe, never mind waiting for Larry. Get on that delivery yourself. Okay, Mr. Clay. Hey, what's going on here? That's my truck. Maybe not anymore. Mr. Clay said for me to take it out. Is that so? Well, we'll see about that. 
I'm sorry I'm late again, Mr. Clay. I was up all night with Peg. Doctor said she had a relapse. That's too bad. Joe said you wanted him to make that delivery to Acme. I was scheduled for it, though, and well, you know how much I need that extra money. You're late. I can't hold up the truck for you. Well, I can't blame you for being sore, Mr. Clay. That extra money I need for Peg, I'll get it somewhere. You mean you don't want another advance from me? Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't do that again to you, Mr. Clay. You've been great about everything. You say she had a relapse, huh? Yes, sir. Had to call an ambulance and rush her back to the hospital. I wouldn't have come in at all today, except that I knew you were short-handed, and I haven't been in much lately. Boy, you sure had me fooled. Sir? You're a liar, Larry. A no-good liar. Well, sir, I'm telling you the truth, I swear. I called your house a little while ago and talked to your wife. Oh. Well, yes, sir, I, 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 I did lie to you. I, I had to, you see. You know what it really is, Mr. Clay? She's on narcotics, and every cent I can beg borrow still goes to pay for her. You're a no good liar, Larry. You're fired. Now get out of here before I really lose my temper. And if I ever see you around here again, you'll be the sorriest guy that ever lived. All right. But I'll get even with you. Mark my words, you and that wife of mine both, I'll get even with both of you. about this? You bet he will. to headquarters. Headquarters by. Injured man. Send an ambulance. Half mile south of Wilton Boulevard on Highway 22. 10-4? 10-4. Take it easy, mister. There's an ambulance on the way. March Chemical Company. Phone them. Truck stolen. What's that? Tell Mr. Clay. Larry stole truck. Explosive chemicals. The March Chemical Company? He... Twenty-one oh eight headquarters.
That's all the information he could give us, Mr. Clay, before he became unconscious. What kind of explosives were in the truck? What about those explosives? Just a moment, please, Mr. Clay. Truckload of potassium hijacked from driver 20 minutes ago. I have Mr. Clay, owner of the chemical company, on the phone. I'll take it. Hello, Mr. Clay. This is Matthews Highway Patrol. How dangerous is this potassium? Well, it all depends on how it's handled. It's all pure stuff and watertight drums. The only danger would come if the drums were broken open. That's what Bolton would do. He'd try to break them open and explode the whole truckload. How much would it take to explode this stuff? Water, that's all you'd need. Let some water hit that potassium and you could have an explosion that could blow up a half a city block. What makes you think Bolton's going to explode it? I fired him this morning. He said he'd pay me back. And I think he'll try. He's a real sorehead. Uh, what's Bolton's address? 1609 Genesee. 1609 Genesee. All right, thanks very much for your help. I'll be in touch with you. I'll be at Bolton's place. This is Matthews. I want an explosive expert. Tell him I'll pick him up in a move about ten minutes. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. What's this? Pack your things now. You can take them and get out of here. Just like that, huh? Yes. After all you've done to me, you think I'm just going to take my things and leave. <laughs> well, I've got plans for you, baby. Don't try anything. If you'll smart, you'll listen to what I got rigged up. Okay, we're listening. You see these nooses around my wife and me? They're connected to a bucket of water in the back of the truck hanging over a big open drum of potassium. You try and touch either one of us and I pull the rope and dump the water into the drum. And then this whole street will go up. Blow yourself to kingdom come. Take a look back there if you still think I'm lying. Now move that car out of the way. Well, what do we do? Nothing, unless we can get to that pail of water. Maybe they're bluffing. We're not going anyplace, Bolton. Get out of the truck. You want to shoot me? Go ahead, shoot. Only remember, I'll fall forward. No, don't shoot, please. Mrs. Bolton. 
Is he bluffing about that water back there in the truck? No, he's telling the truth. You think I'm bluffing? Let me show you something. You see the water in that garbage can top? Do you believe me now? Multiply that a thousand times over and it'll give you an idea what I can do to this whole street. I was going to dump it in my ex-boss's lap. But if you want to be blown up too, that's all right with me. Here goes. That chemical plant, that's outside of town, isn't it? Open countryside, about a mile from the industrial area. Any second now. No! Move your car, please! Please! <laughs> Okay, Bolton, we'll let you go. I figured you'd say that. And don't get any bright ideas about trying to shoot me. We'll have to catch him out in the open. 2150 to headquarters. Headquarters, bye. We just let Bolton drive out in the truck with his wife. They're headed for the chemical plant. Alert the fire department, ambulances, and have all available units in the area stand by for possible aid. 10 4? 10 4. Let's go. Matthews and the Highway Patrol were faced with a situation of incredible danger. They were forced to wait until Bolton reached an area where the threat of a public disaster could be held to a minimum in case the Highway Patrol failed in their attempt. Please, Larry. I'll call off the divorce. I'll do anything you ask. Please let me out. You're willing to act nicer now, huh? Okay, Peg, I'll let you out. Do you really mean it, Larry? Now? Soon. When we get to the plant, I'll let you out there. In pieces. I'm going to pull alongside him. Any way we can immobilize him? Not without removing the water, or at the very least, cutting that rope. Maybe we can give him an escort out of town. A little water from that pail, that's all it would take to set it off. You to stay clear of me. Look, I want to tell you something. Nobody gives me orders anymore. Now stay clear of me, you understand? Stay clear! Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters, bye. On the Bolton case. Want a policewoman to meet me right away. I'll be on Highway 21, about 10 miles west of Route 40. I want her in an unmarked car in civilian clothes. Have a couple of units meet me there, too. 10 4? 10 4. Sounds like you've got an idea, Dan. Now, you talked about cutting that rope. Yeah, but how could we get that close to him without him overturning the water? You know, that's a good question. He's not driving too fast. Let's see if we can cut him off before he gets to the plant. Get in. feel about Mr. Clay and me, I can understand that. But there's one thing that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah? 
Why would you want to kill yourself? Who said I was? But the explosion, you wouldn't stand a chance. Now, you don't think I'd be dumb enough to stay in here with you, do you? When we get close enough to the plant, I'll just head the truck right in and jump. Then what? You don't think you're going to get away with it, do you? They'll get you for murder. You're going to die anyway. Oh, I'm pretty smart. Look how long I fooled you and old man Clay. I'll take my chances on getting away. There's one thing you've forgotten, Larry. Me. If it has to be this way, why should I give you the right to choose where and when I die? What about you? You too? Now! <laughs> Take us. Nine and a half minutes. Nine and a half minutes. That leaves us about ten minutes top. 2150 to headquarters. Headquarters by. I'm at rendezvous. Keep us informed of Bolton's progress. Relay in effect. Bolton's just past 23rd Street. 10 4. He's going faster than I thought. We got about seven minutes. Mr. Matthews, I'm policewoman Eleanor Scott. Well, Scott, I hate to say this, we got a real rough one for you this time. Oh, Garvey, have the airlet out of the front tire on this sedan. Also, keep me informed of reports from headquarters. Oh, by the way, have one of the guys stash my car. Right. You know about this Bolton and the explosives? He's going to be passing here in about six minutes. I'm going to level with you. Your life's in danger, but... Well, if what I got in mind works out, we got a chance to stop him. Go ahead. Well, if your car's going to be parked on the road like it's got a blowout, it's going to be angled in such a way it'll make it difficult for Bolton to get by. He just passed 15th Street. All right, set the car up. Have a guy put 100 yards up the road right here. If the Bolton doesn't stop, we shoot him. Right. Look, there's nothing we can do to help you. You're entirely on your own. If Bolton doesn't stop, we can't do a thing for you. Have you got any questions? I don't think so. He's at 7th Street. 7th Street, 7th Street. That gives us about three minutes. All right. If he stops, I'm going to grab a hold of Bolton. Make sure he doesn't tighten that noose around his neck. Now, you grab a hold of Mrs. Bolton. Make sure she makes no mistakes. I'll get in the back of the truck as quick as I can and cut the rope. Okay, take your positions. You scared? A little. I have news for you. Move over. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Good luck to you. Am I glad you came along? Get out of the way! Oh, please, mister. I got the thing for the tire, but <laughs> I don't know much more. Oh, please, mister. If you'll just tell me what to do next... Get out of the way, or I'll run you down! Come on, please. Won't you help me? Mrs. Bolton. She'll be all right. Good. For a second there, I didn't think he was going to stop. I didn't either. But you're the one that took the chance, Mr. Matthews. If he'd seen you a second before you... You know, I think it's going to rain. <laughs> sea Highway Patrol next week. Until then, remember, 
Leave your blood at the Red Cross or your community blood bank, not on the highway. This is Broderick Crawford saying, see you next week.